Hello. Yeah, so this is a continuation of the introduction to computer network security part 2 and we're looking at an XSS attack. So how does JavaScript steal a cookie? So for example in this script you just say window.location and then you put an attacker website question mark cookie equal to your document.cookie. So what happens in this case? The browser will take this cookie, attach it and make this URL and send you to that location. And at this location attacker he will log whatever is coming in. So you could put any data at this point. So in this in this case he is collecting just a so when you when your computer will contact this attacker, your cookie will go to him. Uh -huh. Okay, so that's how he got your cookie. So the more detailed diagram about XSS attack. So here's the attacker and here's a website. The attacker has inserted a sc uh, script script some red script and it says in the comment it says script window dot location equal to attacker dot cookie something and website sends it to the browser victims browser so it comes from the general website uh, so then victim gets the, the comments inside the comment is a javascript which is basically and this javascript is contacting the attacker website with your cookie Okay, so that's the flow. And there are many examples of it out here. So the application so for example in application you have input you input value is equal to user input. And the malicious string is you just put in a double quote and some script and then double quote. And the resulting code, if you just concatenate all of it, uh, it becomes input value blank value and script some script and then another blank value. That happens because you did not check what the user typed in. Y user was supposed to type in some value, but user actually typed in a script. The attacker. So attacker typed in a script where it was a username. And the best way to get around is sanitize the input, user inputs. Don't allow any meta characters, HTML characters in the input. So the one way is like it's an encode HTML user input. So any, any HTML like uh, double quotes and these angle brackets the HTML characters and they'll get encoded into percentage something. So then here this the script is stuck out here and if you encode it it becomes like this. This, this is LTG uh, semicolon script greater than something like that. Okay so this is not dangerous. So your browser will just display some random characters out here instead of actually JavaScript to you. So first thing we saw the solution is to basically encode all the escape all the user input. So the data should remain data. Data should not become code. It's like somebody sends you uh, something and inside it there are commands. You should not start executing the commands. You should just remain data. Second thing is validation. There can be client side validation to check all the inputs are properly filled, but clients can always bypass that. So you need a server side validation of user input. So that no no data becomes code on your side then you have blacklisting rejection so basically make sure that things that are not allowed get blacklisted and sanitization is whitelisting so whatever remains is whitelisted okay and then let's look at mysql injection so similar to the excess attack what happens is uh, almost every website uses MySQL to store and save user data and show it back to you. So this is the user data with username and password and this is admin login. So in the admin login instead of username you type in hi and double quotes or one equal to one dash dash. So this is taken from this place. So what he typed in was uh, in this joke let's see what happened. Uh, in, in the username uh, he typed in actually a SQL command so when you paste a SQL command into some you execute the data as uh, it, it looks like a SQL command and the, and the server executes it in this case the, the, the name was drop table students drop table is a SQL command that will delete the table student table database and the dash dash is a SQL comment afterwards so basically his name is Robert followed by drop table students. So basically if your person named Robert drop table students 
every time people type in the database and the database doesn't check that is a, is a proper name or not the database gets deleted okay so that's a problem and you can read more about it online SQL injection is all over the web the other common kind of attack is a man in the middle attack so the ISP and your sysadmin they can see all the data going back and forth on a network and then what they do is they can first of all instead of you talking to a bank they can listen to you and then they can talk to you and on another phone they can call the bank and repeat whatever you are saying and get the data from the bank and give it to you and this is how proxy servers also work and they actually collect the data from a website and then show it to you and they inject ads into your ISPs inject ads into your into your connection and the way to get around is to encrypt your session using SSL there's no other way around it so you're trying to connect a user and the man is listening so the problem here is that like the website has a SSL certificate so SSL is encrypting this here is encrypted session between these two using a private key public key and a temporary uh, symmetric key to the, the attacker is talking to the website and he's talking to you also okay so the problem is uh, so in this example we see that like the thing is that the certificate sent to using this guy's private key public key so only he can open it and this guy has to open it but then again he can copy this cert this website certificate and send it to this guy so he can insert a fake certificate saying hey I am the website and likewise in this case the second example uh, the, the, the authority that gives out certificates are like few of them Twate signs Google certificates so when you're talking to Google your browser knows uh, that is signed by Twate Some, a browser has a list of people who can sign certificates so the attacker actually can see it's Google but go attacker uses a fixed foot certificate and your browser is won unless this guy has managed to get a fake certificate claiming to be Google so usually it's very hard to get certificates but there are a lot of rogue websites and rogue governments which will generate fake certificates and claim to be Google or Facebook and then when you log in they collect the data in the middle okay so you have to be very careful okay those about a manual middle attack the other things you need to watch out are the, the, the original old type TCP IP attacks so we we'll look at TCP IP later but what happens is when you start a connection you need to send a synchronized packet to the from the server to the client to the server and then what happens is if the website whenever you get a send packet saying hello somebody say hello you need to hold on to the connection and wait for the connection to complete you say hello and that guy says hello I am this guy and you say okay let's start talking and what happens if somebody just sends hello and doesn't say anything at all you will actually end up using a connection and uh, like suppose you get a thousand calls which say hello hello thousand times you will be holding thousand phones and basically you are starved for resources because you have locked up thousand resources and then you normally your victim will wait for two minutes holding the connection waiting for somebody to reply you say hello hello and in this case the, what the attacker has done is put a fake spoof means a fake return address so then you are replying to somebody which you don't know who it is and then no, you don't get the second reply because you're replying to somebody unknown address so the thing is that after you get sometimes some fake addresses you can actually file can block this attacker so what do you what, what can attacker do you can use a uh, you can use a distributed DOS attack the DOS stands for denial of service so instead of having sent directly from your from the attacker PC a uh, send packet they send it from some zombie PCs. What are zombie PCs? The PCs with viruses or malware in it and then there's an attacker who controls all these PC, uh, PCs and they don't know it just runs slow and then the attacker can send packets from those zombie PCs to the website with send flood or whatever in this case you can't even block it because you don't know they're coming from all over the internet and many websites get attacked like this and for a few hours when attack goes on you can't really reply because there's so many packets with no real data in it okay so that's about DDoS we'll see it later on now let's look at 
login so login basically you log in so the first question is how do you know you are really logging into google not something else the first thing is that you see the, the green lock how does the green lock work is basically encrypted session with google and google has a certificate signed by some authority and the signature the public key of that authority is in your browser so your browser knows okay a browser can decrypt it and check that the self is valid if somebody opens it they cannot reclose it they cannot lock it if the if an ISP opens it. So basically yeah, what happens is one you want to make a connection first you need to find out DNS where is google.com or whatever and then find the IP address. So you, when you type in google.com your, your DNS service will give you google.com's address IP address and DNS also can be poisoned and we'll consider later how to get around it. You can encrypt it or whatever authenticate which DNS you talk to and then you get the website name then you connect to the website and website sends a certificate then both of you exchange your certificates and after exchange your certificates you decide on a cipher algorithm that you're going to use to talk basically RSA elliptic curve and now there's elliptic curve and you both of you have a first exchange create a common one-time key and that key will be used to encrypt the session uh, this is called SSL connection even mail uses it and nowadays the certificates are very cheap and they're almost free it's called less encrypted everything project so how here's another example of it so let's talk SSL this guy say so here's my certificate here's a one-time key let's use it for a session because RS is very hard to compute it takes a lot of time they just use it for the initial handshake and after the handshake they use a uh, symmetric one-time key okay and then they start talking using this data and here's the certificate authority is a uh, server server gets authority key from the server browser is a browser is own key server is own key and the server's key uh, certificate is signed by the certificate authority and the browser has a copy of the certificate authority key and other place is in if you're using Windows or Linux uh, uh, programmer, you'd be using SSH. So SSH just establishes a secure shell connection between a client and a server. It could be even on the same PC. So here's a client, and then normally when you talk on TCP, ISP, or your sysadmin can see, or the Wi-Fi, anyone can see the data going back and forth, and your passwords are there. So what you do is you establish a SSH connection. SSH it's secure shell is just a TCP connection which is encrypted using public key and private key and then this example of using of it you can even you can then once you have a session running you can run any, any other protocol on top of SSH in this case you can run Firefox and then you can run the SOX protocol on SSH and what happens is in this case is SSH will, will open a port local port 10080 on a local computer client and then if you run Firefox on a local machine uh, uh, on a local this is a local host and the SOX protocol and then so Firefox will actually talk to this local SSH and SSH will tunnel your data to this server and server will send it to the website then uh, so on Firefox when you type what is my IP you'll get the server IP okay and the different kinds of SSH keys but but most of them are similar they just have public key private key and we'll, we already saw how public key and private key work in different lecture thank you that's it